this is very different from anything that anyone else has done. But um, yes, that says is Google ethical. It's a bit broader than that, uh, or less broad. Uh, we're talking about tax planning, and tax planning in its broadest sense is what companies like Google and other multinationals do to ensure that they pay essentially as little tax as possible by moving their money around the country, uh, or not sorry, country, I mean world, by moving their monies around the world and putting them in tax havens like Switzerland and Bermuda and other places like that, and other such things you hear about in the media. Um, and so, first of all, I wanted to work out where the cutoff point was. What, at what point does it cease becoming good business practice and simply become in unethical, essentially? Um, and then what is being done about it by the UK government, because I looked at the UK specifically, um, if anything, and if anything should be done about it, or whether it is simply part of the course of international business so we just get on with it and live our lives safe in the knowledge that the UK government doesn't get any money. Um, so, why did I choose Google? Well, one of the major reasons why I chose Google was because it was in the news. Um, still is in the news. Um, in fact, most poignantly, the diverted profits tax, as the government calls it, has been dubbed the Google tax by the media um, because they were the big ones and indeed they were the ones who were forced almost at gunpoint to pay a large amount of money to the UK government, whereas other companies like Starbucks and Amazon suddenly jumped on the bandwagon and paid the money without being told to. Um, also, the other reason I chose Google was because when I was starting this assignment uh, dissertation, I looked at the previous assignment I'd done in second year, which was based on Google's tax, and sort of found that really interesting and found that as a good place to start. So, what did I do? Well, I started with the ethical theories. So, I had studied a little bit about ethical theory, so I went and I had a look at a couple of ethical, well, three or four, two or three ethical theories. So there was Egoism by Adam Smith, there was a, um, a couple of others. Um, so I went, I found the original articles, Utilitarianism for example, uh, looked at the original articles, took them and then took a couple of critiques of those that had been based or even post-modern post techniques, i.e. ones that critique the whole system of normative ethical theories, postmodernism in a nutshell basically says get on with it, do whatever you feel like doing. Um, then in order to link the what I was doing to the ethical theories I looked at news articles and they were the ones that found the real world examples of what Google was doing and other companies like Amazon and Starbucks. And then in order to see whether this, how this was reported by the companies themselves I looked at their accounts um, to see whether there was evidence of tax planning. Simple answer to that is yes. For example, Google UK account showed that somewhere in the region about 90 something percent of the amount of money that they earned in the UK was spent on administrative expenses um, which usually went to companies like Bermuda um, and other such countries that don't uh, need you to pay much tax. Um, so, what did I conclude? Well, I concluded that, in a nutshell, tax planning could technically be ethical. It depended upon the theory being used, it also depended upon from whose perspective you looked. Because, obviously, from the point of view of the company itself, it's perfectly ethical. And in fact, as Eric Schmidt, I think his name is, um, who was one of the members of the company, he basically said, we don't make the rules, we pay the taxes. The government makes the rules. If they want us to pay more tax, change the rules. Um, and so then you have to look at, is it essentially a necessary evil? I.e., is it such that a, is it such that in order for big multinationals to exist, um, do they have to essentially pay their tax in the way they want to, because if you don't let them do that, then they'll run away. I mean, I don't think that Google will com would completely cease operating in the UK if they didn't let them sort of operate in the way that they are at the moment. But they might twist a bit here, change a bit there, increase the price of their 
their phones or whatever else or start charging for search, searches on their search engine or something. However, to be honest, it is largely unethical. Um, the, but also the more important thing is the fact that actually what you forget or what the companies seem to forget is that the governments themselves pay the money out to other people in their country. And so therefore it is a big problem for them, the people on benefits, whether it's right or wrong, another discussion. But those people who are on benefits need the money. So therefore, that money needs to come from somewhere, largely comes from tax. Although corporation tax is a small proportion of what the government gets in, a company like Google, who's evading a billion dollars worth of tax or whatever in the UK, a billion dollars will go a long way, hopefully, fingers crossed, unless it increases the government's pension pot or whatever. Um, but the important thing to state is that there is no one-size-fits-all solution. You're talking about a global environment. So essentially, you'd have to look at every country in the world. So countries like Switzerland and Bermuda are essentially going to try and stop you from doing anything that might suggest that they can't get the money in themselves. Because sure, the money sort of goes via them and then goes out again and what have you, but it increases the local economy there to have one person sitting sitting in an office somewhere, but at least that one person then buys goods and services in Bermuda and what have you. Um, so that is that is kind of the major point. So um, I kind of misunderstood the um, the brief of this. So these are very these these are very brief points for anybody <laughs> who are actually um, doing such a project. So basically, as I said, choose an enjoyable topic. I largely found mine reasonably enjoyable. Start early, i.e. start in the summer. That's the major point. Start in the summer b between second and third year. I had pretty well all of my um, academic articles already nailed down. Hadn't read most of them, but I had them. Um, the, like I said, where my idea came from was an assignment I'd already done. So if you have that sort of um, thing, then look at those assignments and start from there. We'll start from looking at academic papers that already exist. Um, and obviously, most importantly, try, if at all possible, to have fun. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Thank you for any questions. Thank you very much, Matthew. So, any questions on the Ask him about close modernity. Somebody ask him about <laughs> <laughs> any, any questions, please? From... Is it? Mm -hmm. it's it's I think she's talking to you. Okay. okay. Sometimes there's someone behind and you don't want to embarrass yourself. <laughs> um, so, it, as it, when you start to put up Google, so it's got a bit of preamble if that's okay, um, I thought that's actually very interesting because large companies, particularly uh, um, digital companies that collect a lot of data, do, do have to consider the implications of what they're ethically going to do with it. And Google has the mantra, don't be evil. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> obviously you've only looked at Google, but to what extent would a company's ideal of having that sort of thing, a, a corporate culture, should it, and to what extent does it, influence fiscal decisions? Well, basically, I mean, I didn't just look at Google. I used Google as the main case study. I looked at country, companies, Amazon and Starbucks were the other two I looked at as well. And I briefly looked at John Lewis, largely as a company, but sort of, they're UK based, sure they're not international, but they, they pay a lot more tax. Um, but the thing is that I don't, I, I think that it's less about the organisational culture and more about the economic culture. I think it's the fact that most of the Western world, and in fact most of the world as a whole, is a largely capitalist society which is out for profit. And if it's out for profit, the best way to get profit is to pay less tax. So therefore, if you can find a way to pay less tax, then you move it out. Sure, some organisations, like I said, like John Lewis for example, they're a more collective organisation. They don't really mind. They'll pay the tax that is necessary and they'll get money elsewhere, and the way they get money is by charging more for their services. So it, it's sort of a, it, essentially every company, most companies, sure charities are exceptions, but most companies are out there to make money in some way, shape or form, but the way that a lot of the multinational companies have chosen to do it 
is to charge less for their services, get loads of money in, and then try and get rid of as little of it as possible in things like tax. Any questions for Matthew? More tips for when to start your dissertation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said those. I'd say those to Matthew. In that case, Matthew, thank you very much indeed.